Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, according to the IMF, over the next five years, the global economy will increasingly rely on BRICS countries for growth, with a corresponding decline in the influence of the G7 states. China and India are expected to lead in terms of growth and purchasing power parity. Concurrently, the United States, France, Germany, the UK and Japan are experiencing a rapid decline in their respective positions. Now, it's thought that the G7 will no longer be primary decision-making body on the key issues related to global trade, currency and financial relations, as well as economic cooperation. Now, according to the IMF, BRICS is gaining greater influence on the global stage and it's anticipated that the role of the BRICS countries in the global economy will significantly increase over the next five years. Now this is forecast is based on their own internal data at the IMF and it was reported by Bloomberg and it's based on purchasing power parity analysis of the countries in question. Now, first and foremost, significant growth is anticipated from China, India, Russia and Brazil. Now, in this indicator, the countries will be able to outperform the members of the so-called Big G7, including the USA, Germany and Japan in particular. Now, their potential, potential contribution has been reassessed and revised substantially downwards. The IMF anticipates that China will achieve the greatest success. Its contribution to their growth is likely to be 21% higher than the G7 countries combined. Another significant contributor is India, and it's anticipated it will be almost 14.8% of the global GDP by 2029. Uh, As a result, the global economy is becoming increasingly reliant on emerging markets including those currently outside of the BRICS, although it's expected that many of those will be members in the future. Now, it's particularly evident in the purchasing power indicator. It adjusts prices to give more weight to countries with a lower GDP per capita, which are often more populous. Now, in the light of the aforementioned, it's anticipated that Egypt will increase uh, and experience a 1.7% growth, which is on par with that of Germany and Japan. Vietnam is by 1.4%, which is about the same growth as France and the UK. That's over a five-year period. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinside.com. And to do so, you can further and further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which you can do by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. And I'm thanking all of you just for watching because every view is important. Meanwhile, the two smallest economies of the G7, Canada and Italy, will each contribute less than 1% to global GDP growth over the five-year period, a figure that's less than that contributed by countries such as Bangladesh or the Philippines. Now, the US position is also less robust than previously. America has been unable to maintain its share in the global economy in terms of purchase and power parity for some time. In the IMF forecast, the US United States is ranked third with a figure of less than 12%. Russia's in fifth place in the uh, rating, and it's anticipated that Russia will contribute around 2.5%. That's an increase of about half a percent compared to the figure predicted by the IMF only six months ago. Now, Russia is outperformed by Indonesia, which has moved into fourth place with a contribution of 3.5% over the next five years. Now, as we know, the BRICS alliance currently comprises nine countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Ethiopia, Iran, the United Arab Emirates, Egypt, as well as uh, possibly Saudi Arabia. Now, the combined population of the BRICS countries is about 43% of the global total, while the combined GDP is 26%. And that's according to Dmitry Korkov, who's a member of the... Russian Asian Union of Industrialists and Entrepreneurs. And he notes that the BRICS countries have been gaining weight in many sectors of the global economy and they will continue to influence the growth in the future. I mean, and even in its current composition, without any expansion further from the nine, 
BRICS is on track to reach 50% of global GDP by 2050, while the influence of the developed countries will be reduced to below 20%. The ascendance of BRICS over the last two years is a clear indication, according to, to the West, that everything is moving in another direction. It's a clear indication that the key issues related to fair and sustainable development of world trade, currency and financial relations, as well as international cooperation, cannot be resolved within the G7 or the G20 anymore and BRICS needs to be involved. I mean, the continuation of this dynamic interaction in the future will have a very significant impact on the G7 as the spectrum of global solutions uh, to key issues will be made by the BRICS. Now, it's important to understand that the BRICS, as the Russian President Vladimir Putin stated, is not in opposition to the existing world order. Rather, it's a supporter of reforms to these uh, world order. And they don't want to create a new anti-Western world. They want to transform the unfair and unreasonable aspects of the current system that the US has made and others in the G7 are following. They want to make it more fair and equal through common governance and joint co uh, consultations. I mean, the BRICS countries are notable for the rapid development, and you can highlight the fact that they are the fastest growing economies. I mean, previously, they were on this periphery of the world economy, but now they've established themselves as the new centre of the global economy. Now, in particular, the growth of the global significance as BRICS is largely due to the rise of China and India, and they've become the key players in global trade and investment. Now, in today's economic climate, the countries within the BRICS Association are seeking to bolster their influence through the utilisation of alternative financial institutions, and these include things like the New Development Bank. Now, it's important to understand that that organisation is not a replacement for the World Bank or the IMF. The objective of the New Development Bank is to complement and strengthen existing financial institutions but away from the influence or malign influence of particularly the US. In general, a number of factors can be identified at the growing influence of BRICS. First and foremost, the collective economic influence of BRICS is growing in line with the advancement of its technological and production capacities. Also, BRICS countries are seeking to diversify their con economies through the development of interstate projects, the creation of joint financial institutions, and that will facilitate the strengthening of mutual trade ties. Nevertheless, there are still challenges that require attention. There are significant discrepancies between the economic models, political systems, and the levels of development of the association's participants. Now, these differences often make it challenging to coordinate actions within the BRICS, which in turn reduces the effectiveness of the world uh, on the world stage. Now, the significant milestone of the 16th summit in Kazan demonstrated to the world that the BRICS countries are going to play a pivotal role in the global economy. Right? Now, that's pretty obvious, and the fact that people like uh, the uh, Secretary General of the United Nations, um, Guterres, turned up means that it's now being taken seriously, and the members of the association having gathered and discussed the political and economic agenda, have demonstrated to the G7s that they've not only surpassed them in their contribution to uh, global GDP, but have their own influential scenario for the development of the global economy. Now, the most crucial decisions to be made in the near term are those two pertaining to the de-escalation of the conflict in Ukraine and the support for some sort of agreement in the Middle East. In the longer term, the creation of a unified investment uh, platform, the formation of a single trading currency and a grain exchange are particularly noteworthy. Now, Russia's demonstrated the potential for all alternative channels to address the channel. These challenges where previously underrepresented uh, countries can now play a pivotal role. Now, this will result in the BRICS taking on a number of functions that are currently concentrated in the UN, including economic cooperation and global security. Russia's status as a key player was reinforced by the summit, and this 
uh, enabled Russia to showcase its contributions to the advancement of the BRICS, highlighting its economic prospects and its investment potential. Now, Russia, with its substantial uh, industrial uh, resources and developed industrial bases, uh, plays a pivotal role in ensuring energy security within the BRICS framework as a large supplier of oil and gas to both India and to uh, China. In the context of global uncertainty, Russia can leverage its resources to reinforce its position in the global markets, but it does need uh, to make sure that it can develop its uh, production capacities rather than uh, those of China and India. I mean, Russia's place in, uh, in BRICS is more political and economic, and that's what it's looking to look at problem solving. That's what Russia is keen to overcome sanctions and conflicts and develop international trade. They need to find a solution to the current restrictions in order to maintain economic stability, not only in uh, Russia, but around the Middle East and Asia. I mean, if you've got to overcome the hegemony and the use of the institutions by the West to control trade. Now, to effect change, it's, in, it's essential to implement structural reforms, diversify the economies and enhance the investment climate. Without that, Russia's role in the economy will diminish. However, the G7's got bigger challenges than that. Its socio-economic model of development has not functioned since before the pandemic, and the fuel crisis caused by the sanctions on Russia has always caused major, major problems, and they're going to continue. The G7 will continue to exert an economic influence within the international financial institutions like the IMF, the World Bank, uh, and the WTO. But the days of its dominance are over. That means the BRICS countries' objective is to enhance their global economic influence, and they must face up to these challenges. The internal contradictions and lack of coordination may prevent them assuming the role as the G7 in the very near future, but the medium term, the outlook is certain. It seems that in the likely years that the global economic landscape is going to be shaped by a complex interplay between the BRICS countries, and no single entity will expect, accept overwhelming uh, dominance. And that's why the BRICS exists. It works, and it works for all the countries in it. So the future is bright, and the future is BRICS. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like, sh subscribe, share and also um, contribute if you want by uh, clicking on the thanks button and don't forget the, uh, the comments button. Love to read your comments, love to respond to them and I'll see you all again soon.